Hey everyone, and welcome to a new YouTube video. It's Justin here with JM Nature Escapes, and thanks for clicking. The sun has just set. I'm checking out Vermilion Point Life Saving Station up in the UP. And this is very close to uh, Whitefish Point and Crisp Point Lighthouse as well. So it's a really cool area. It is gonna be super dark. The smoke is cleared. Uh, there is what looks like some haze on the horizon, but for the most part, it looks like it's pretty much gone. Um, so I do think it should be pretty good tonight. And I'm really looking forward to being out here because, man, I am really going to miss Michigan. So we'll just kind of see what happens. And I have a lot of different compositions kind of planned tonight. So it's going to be a really crazy run and gun kind of night. Um, I may end up doing some local composites, which is probably going to be what ends up happening. Because I have a lot of compositions that kind of end up being at the exact same time. So what happens, what I do when that happens is I will typically take some blue hour shots for my foreground and then I will preview the image on the back of my LCD screen and then I will compose the sky shot exactly where the Milky Way needs to be in that shot and I will then take that shot so then later I can go into Photoshop and I can just blend in the sky as if I were to be right there but in reality I'm you know a hundred feet away or something just uh, in a slightly different place at the same location so um, if I need to I'll do some stacked shots rather than doing the, the composites but I don't really care I like tracking that's why I got a tracker so whatever it makes uh, it easier so whatever's easier so I say let's get going because sunset, so that means blue hour is pretty much upon us. So I need to get working on these blue hour blends. So this is actually one of my compositions and I did switch the mic over so I hope you guys can hear me okay. I had to unplug it due to um, where the mic goes into the camera since I'm in portrait orientation now. But this is one of the compositions, so just so you can see. Here's something that I try to be careful of is that in its blue hour you got to watch reflections in like the lake and windows of buildings so i actually might wait until darkness to take a long uh, foreground exposure so this is the absolutely beautiful nature area that's just on the other side of where i was filming more toward where the cars are but this is going to be the first panorama of the night and possibly where I do the majority of my uh, sky shots but I might do my sky shots from the beach as well so there's another huge open area doesn't really matter either place works but looks like the Milky Way is pretty much gonna be right about there pretty much all night it's just gonna go through there so it's a pretty good place just to post up and enjoy the stars Unless you're going to go to the beach itself and enjoy the sound of the waves, which is also very nice too. So the plan for this pano, I'm going to do one row with the 28 millimeter, pretty much all the way, 180 degrees across, and probably just move up a row, go across, call it good. Well, it's about what time is it? It's about 10:30, and I would say this is pretty close to what it looks like in real time. You know, we got some stars peeking through. I wonder if that's, that must be a tiny bit of light pollution way over there. Uh, but yeah, we got, I don't, wow, I think you can maybe see the Milky Way even a tiny bit in, film, in video. I don't know if I've ever got that before. I'm gonna increase the ISO, but man, the noise is so bad. But you can see Scorpius right there. And you can see, oh, why can I not think of the star? 
I want to say Articus, but that's not right. <laughs> uh, but we got Scorpius right there, and I think tonight I might try to learn more constellations because something to pass the time. But we have the remaining bits of sunset over there. Got twilight. Got those nice twilight reds and oranges. And the Big Dipper there too. So. For the most part, I got all my shots. Some of the shots I opted to not getting because of the window reflection and it was just kind of a pain in the butt, but we'll see. Wow, so it is now 10.56 and we are about 25 to 30 minutes until pure darkness. We still got a little bit time left on astronomical twilight the Milky Way is looking pretty great in fact you should be able to see the core right there now I'm gonna increase the ISO again but it is very noisy but you can really see that Milky Way core there really really cool I've quite frankly never been able to photograph or video the core I've never tried just because the noise is so bad but Pretty amazing. Walking around now, but uh, the Benro Polaris is pretty much all set up and aligned. I just took a little test shot. You can see that right here. And basically I am going to check out the beach real quick. Probably don't need to. I can probably just go on a hill. But we are... Uh, as I kind of mentioned earlier, we're expecting some northern lights. Um, honestly, not really expecting, but there's supposed to be a storm coming probably tomorrow night. But you never know, it might hit early, and it looks like the data is supporting maybe a little bit of northern lights right now, or in the next 30 minutes or so. And since uh, darkness doesn't officially fall until about 11.25, I want to make sure that it's actually darkness until I start, um, you know, taking my shots. So and that's mainly to ensure that I get really any air glow and the full effect of any air glow if there is any. So we shall see. Well, just took some quick test shots and it looks like there might be a little bit of Aurora glow, which is like a pinkish reddish glow just over the horizon from the very tippy tippy tops of the pillars but other than that really doesn't look like anything's going to happen and i got some big plans for this weekend so i want to make sure i got all my batteries so let's get started on the rest of these shots all right you guys i think it is time to catch some sleep it's about 2 45 in the morning and i took so many shots and I actually ended up not doing a whole lot of local compositing. So I ended, ended up doing a lot of different starlight blends. So I took my big panorama here and I ended up just going to the locations pretty much right when I needed to. So I'd set up, I'd take my foreground shot, I'd align the tracker, I'd track the sky, and then I'd move on to the next location and just do everything right then and there. So thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I know I didn't have a whole lot of time to film in between and kind of talk about each shot, but I'm going to do that right here. So enjoy these shots. The first shot of the night was this crazy pano, as I talked about. The first bottom row for the foreground was a focus stack during blue hour, kind of twilight. And then I just went ahead and did all the track shots all the way across. And this is probably my favorite shot of the entire night. This shot was a blue hour blend. I took this during blue hour of myself in the foreground and then took the 50 millimeter tracked shot right after I finished taking the panorama. Again, with the blue hour blend, this one was also focus stacked and I really loved the cooler tones in this with the sky and the foreground. So this is probably my second or third favorite image of the night. So the remainder of the night, I pretty much just went around and 
kind of compared my photo pills, different screenshots to the different buildings and decided whether I was going to try to do the blue hour blends or if I was going to do starlight blends. And for all of these four images that you're going to see here, uh, these were all starlight blends. And I tried experimenting with some light painting as well with some of these. And I did end up tracking all of the skies at each of the locations. So I would do the starlight blend with like a two to four minute exposure and then I would set up the tracker and take the tracked shot. And this next image here is probably the craziest and most complicated image that I tried of the night which is funny because I did some pretty crazy panoramas and how I did this one is I tracked the sky. I tried doing stacked foreground so I ended up taking 12 shots at ISO 12,800 but then I also took a couple really long exposure foreground blends, which were at like ISO 2000 four minutes. So they uh, could be nice and bright. And then for the river or the stream that you see here, I also stacked uh, those. So I tried stacking that. It didn't end up working. So the way I did that is I actually ended up blending a single image uh, in at a really high ISO, that 12,800, and just doing some pretty extreme noise reduction in Lightroom, blending all of those shots together, and that's what you see here. So I knew I wanted to do a 360 degree shot here, and I wanted the Milky Way to be pretty much completely vertical and straight up, equally dividing the sky. And this is kind of what I came up with. This is just the 360 shot of the sky. And you can also go to my Facebook page to find the 360 degree VR version of this where you can click with your mouse and you can kind of drag around. Or if you have a VR headset, you can look at the picture that way. And I did take a couple other versions of this too. Uh, just different projections using PT GUI like this one that you see here. And I also did another crop of uh, this one that you see here, which is probably one of the kind of craziest looking ones. And it just happens to be when I ended up taking all these shots and putting these together, um, we had some really nice aurora glow kind of going on. So we had that nice pinkish, almost orange kind of glow to the north. But uh, that wraps up pretty much all of these videos or all of the photos. The only other one I really have is this kind of little selfie that I did, this little portrait that I did. So um, thanks for watching the video, guys. Have a great night, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.